several other books, and I was able to dump my file. And there's lots of stuff that didn't go into this book that I could I could talk about at, at much more length than you're interested in. Um, about the depth of spending that um, you you mentioned about with yeah, Bush, um, but um, I just just a comment. But um, um, it, it, yeah, the, the dollar value did change; it kept on changing. But the um, I, I think the problem is the yeah, the fact that he had to borrow so much. That's that itself is creating the inflation, and Obama is doing the same thing in his term. You know, all the money that he's been spending uh, is greater than what uh, all the, president, the, uh, the previous presidents, including Bush, um, had spent in the past. And so actually that number, I mean, that, uh, those numbers, actually they are, um, to me, um, valid in a sense that um, it's, it's, not, it's not that those, the data, the study was wrong because um, they didn't take into consideration that um, the dollar value and value was changing, but the fact that because of that dollar value is going down. Um, so, uh, oh, you, that's a, actually a, a, it's a very valid point, and you're right that it's a complex relationship. The more money supply you have, the less the money is worth, uh, and when you do spending like that, you do cause inflation. However, inflation was not out of control. Uh, during the Bush years. It's not out of control during the Obama years yet. Um, and if you chose to pick uh, a different dollar amount and, and uh, a different year, say, pick 19, $1979 uh, instead of uh, these dollars and, say, and uh, change uh, the scale accordingly, uh, the same criticism would be true. 1979 is very different from the Louisiana Purchase. So I agree with your overall point that there is a valid criticism underneath it all, that in fact Bush shouldn't have been doing so much deficit spending, and you can argue the same is true of Obama. Obama shouldn't be doing that much spending. However, this valid point can be made without distorting the truth and making it look like the borrowing is like all of the other presidents combined, when that's just hyperbolic and it's hyperbolic because the numbers don't really bear that out. Anything else? I have a, a general, more general question. Of all the research that you do, what process do you go through in order to decide that's a great book topic? How do you, how do you, how do you kind of fall on something and say, hey, that would really make a great book topic? Well, it's a different process for each book. Um, my first book is a book about the number zero. And the story there was I saw an article in The Atlantic uh, talking about whether the year 2000 or 2001 was the turn of the millennium. It's a silly little argument. But the number of letters in, uh, people were angry about it. And so I thought, oh, this is, this is a really interesting topic that people care about. And since I was coming from mathematics, I, I knew a lot about zero and infinity and can write about that. Um, my books in the middle, which were about cosmology, uh, fusion, and information theory, come from what I found interesting as a science journalist, what I thought was really hot and really developing. Um, cosmology, for example, there was, a, I think, a real revolution uh, starting in late 90s and going until today. So I thought this was an exciting thing to, to write about. Um, and I came back to this one because it's been a, a topic that's been festering in my mind uh, for 20 years. And I, I, uh, enough things have happened with uh, numerical lies that are current uh, that I figured it was, it was time to get it out. Anything else? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming tonight. Charles is going to stick around and sign his books for you and answer any other questions you might have. Upcoming events are at strandbooks.com. Thank you all.